Well, joining me now is George Georgiakopoulos, who is a Greek journalist based in Athens. Good morning to you. Good morning, David. Can you just bring us up to speed on the latest? I mean, obviously, this is a huge problem, a huge humanitarian crisis. 30,000 people now on the move in roads, also in Corfu. What's the latest? Absolutely. A uh, huge uh, humanitarian and environmental crisis. Um, the latest is that uh, the, the flames are being contained to an extent both on roads and on Corfu. Uh, but overnight there was a huge effort by uh, authorities in order to lift people away uh, to safety. Some uh, beyond the 30,000 you mentioned uh, evacuated from um, the uh, hotspots of uh, roads. Uh, about 1,000 people have been evacuated by land uh, in uh, on Corfu and another 59 by sea on Corfu. Um, it is improving, um, all, even though we're expecting uh, the wind gusts to strengthen again uh, during the course of the day. But overnight the news uh, was a little bit more encouraging. And just looking at all of the headlines this morning, the sun says run for your lives. All of the all of the papers, pretty much all of the papers actually majoring on this. That people called it our terror. Uh, they fact they, they they're describing it as a, as complete hell. Just in terms, what's the mood like when you talk to people in Rhodes and in Corfu? Uh, people are desperate. They're simply desperate. They they kept saying that they were being chased by the flames. They were saying that uh, there was very little help uh, from um, uh, from the authorities, but obviously the re Greek resources have been stretched to their limit or even beyond that, uh, given that it's not just roads or Corfu. There have been wildfires in several other spots of the country, uh, such as the Peloponnese uh, and Evia, uh, other um, tourism destinations that you may have heard of. So um, it's it's desperate for locals, it's desperate for tourists, and it's heartbreaking for every Greek to see this happening. And of course, Greece relies on the Greek islands rely heavily on tourism, and of course, this will dent confidence in what is going on. Just in terms of the holiday makers, uh, they were forced to run from the flames, as I said, many describing this like the end of the world, the sea turning black from certain flames on the horizon, and apparently fights have broken out as as a result of people trying to be evacuated. Some boats turning up saying they're only taking women and children. I mean, it must be absolutely terrifying if you're caught in the middle of this. Terrifying, it, it definitely was, and it definitely is. It, at least it was not as chaotic as it was in the past, when, like five years ago, uh, there were 105 uh, people dying from uh, a fire uh, closer to Athens in uh, eastern Attica. Uh, at least uh, this time we have not had any victims, which is very, very important as well. Uh, the, big obvious, the victims now are uh, the Greek forests, the Greek islands, Greek tourism, Greek economy, and so on. Uh, although I must say that he, this has been uh, a tragedy uh, that keeps repeating itself year after year after year in this beautiful country and it's a shame that uh, it's going to happen again. Do you think one of the problems is actually that there isn't enough information about what to do? So, so certainly in Australia there is huge public information campaigns about making sure you don't leave glass out, for example, that can be magnified by the sun's rays. We know that the temperatures are very hot in the summer and of course there is always a risk of wildfires. It is unusual to have winds of this strength. Do you think that more could be done to prevent these fires in the first place? Definitely more has to be done and it has to start from... Uh... Uh, from the root of the problem, which is uh, the citizens, as you mentioned. It's not just the glass, it's that it's, uh, we need to uh, teach people that uh, no uh, fire should be started for any reason whatsoever. No uh, th uh, thermal labor such as um, uh, burning anything uh, outside, uh, outdoors, uh, uh, and that uh, people should be extremely, extremely cautious uh, and vigilant as well when they see some smoke, they should immediately report it and not leave it to anyone else. However, this, it's not just an education problem. There is, there is also uh, the problem of uh, incendiary situation when people out of malevolence uh, start fires. And there have been several arrests, including one on roads uh, uh, regarding uh, possible uh, arson.
Uh, and just in terms of, of the help on the ground, now obviously the Greek authorities doing their very best to put out these fires. But many people are complaining that they were left stranded by the travel reps. They were told to stay put. The, the travel companies involved, particularly TUI, Jet2, the reps had said, right, stay where you are, we'll come back to you with more information. They then found the reps had disappeared. They had no idea what to do. And of course, as you rightly say, the Greek authorities very, very stretched. So it seems that actually there seems to be a derogation of duty by some of those holiday companies leaving people stranded not knowing what to do. It looks like although there was a contingency plan regarding the evacuation of uh, tourists and locals uh, which uh, worked well there was no contingency plan in terms of uh, co the communication between uh, tourists uh, tour operators and the, uh, the authorities. There was that, that uh, link missing and uh, we in the Greek press uh, are getting complaints both by uh, uh, the foreign tourists in, um, and on the islands and by Greek tourists as well who also did not get enough uh, information about what to do. It looks like there was also poor communication between the authorities and the tour operators and the Greek authorities are also complaining about um, insufficient, so to speak, uh, cooperation with the tour operators at first, over the first days of the fire on roads, because we are uh, going through the seventh consecutive day of the fire on that island. So, so just in terms of the Greek authorities meeting and having contingency planning and emergency planning, what is the Greek government now saying to Greek citizens and indeed to the tour operators? Uh, on roads? Indeed. On road, it's uh, saying that uh, the, they should uh, try and avoid any uh, any proximity to the to the wildfire. They should try and stick to the north of the island, which has been safe for the time being, including Rhodes Town, uh, and obviously the areas close to the airport and uh, and the main town are safe. And they are also asking for help uh, from the locals for regarding mattresses which is essential because th there are thousands of people of foreign uh, tourists stranded on the island uh, who do not have anywhere to sleep and uh, the the authorities are asking for extra mattresses from the locals in order to help these people spend the night well, I think you make a really good point there. As you say, people don't know where they can spend the night. We have families uh, sleeping rough, people in cardboard boxes. There's a rapid deployment team that has been sent from the United Kingdom. People are saying, though, why was the Foreign Office there so late when people actually knew these wildfires were in existence? Just looking forward, the Greek authorities, do they believe they can bring this under control in the relatively near future? It looks like the, uh, the roads fire is about to be brought under full control. It's already under partial control. And the fire on uh, uh, Corfu is under control. But every day there are new uh, spots of uh, forest fires uh, springing up. And uh, we, we are expecting strong winds, gale forces for the day today, for Monday. So um, it's, it's going to be a difficult situation, but it always is. It is like this every summer. Uh, summer after summer, parts of... Uh, uh, Greek forestry uh, getting burned and it looks like that's not going to stop. George, very good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for your time. That's George Geopolis, uh, who is a Greek journalist uh, based in Athens. Um, just, uh, Emma, just in terms of, uh, of what George was saying, it happens every single year, and I think we have to be very careful, and, and this is what James said right at the beginning, is linking this to climate change. Mm. It's summer, it gets hot, there is a spark, a fire, a wind, and this is the result. I mean, that's true. Uh, but at the same time, you know, these uh, these strong winds, uh, you know, scientists are very um, confident linking the more extreme reoccurrences. So, you know, these fires have always happened, uh, but they are happening with more regularity um, and a, a greater heat and a gre covering a greater distance. So I think it's about exacerbating existing problems. And that's sort of what the islands are struggling with. And, and I think also it's important that people know their consumer rights, actually, what they do. If you've got a holiday book, for example, and, and I assume that the advice is to contact the tour operator and get advice from them immediately and the insurance company. Indeed. I mean, uh, I suppose if you're, you're in roads, it's not at the top of your mind. But if you were planning a, a holiday to fly out this week, or maybe later in August, it's certainly something that people will be quite concerned about. And you would hope that the tour operators are giving quite clear information at this point. It, mm. You know, having been criticised over the weekend for not doing so and continuing to fly out, if your holiday, you know, for Rhodes or Corfu or any other place that's affected in this way, 
if your flight is next week, maybe the week after, it's certainly something you would be advising people to, to, to Google their terms and conditions. Well, well, it's really interesting. The UK's Foreign Office has urged British travellers affected by the wildfires to follow guidance from the Greek Emergency Services. And it says, check with your travel operator or hotel prior to travel. But, this is the crucial but, it has stopped short of advising against travelling to roads. And the reason is that if they were to do that, this mm. would significantly add weight to anyone seeking compensation. And that that then also then hinges back to the travel insurers. So the travel insurers are waiting for clear guidance from the British government about whether they're actually telling people not to go. But yeah. at the moment, it seems like they're passing the buck and saying talk to the travel operator. Well, also, you know, it's quite right to point out that the not the entire island is affected. And that's and, a great point. And if you're all staying in the north of the island, you know, as, as George just said, ar around uh, Rhodes Town uh, and the airport itself in the north, they're not affected in this way. Mm. So it, it would be quite a step for the government to give advice not to travel at all given that not the entire country's effect, uh, islands affected i know and, and actually you know at the end of the day you have to look at these poor people who are struggling i mean it must mm. be absolutely horrific being caught in the middle of this uh